I'd like to welcome everybody again to Orangeburg Touchdown Club. Uh, thanks very much to T&D and our sponsors who were able to come on board every week. I uh, had some great games last weekend and some really good games coming up this week. Uh, we also have a special guest, Moni Workman, who uh, is a longtime sponsor representing ATI for our Comeback Player of the Week, which is always very interesting. So uh, after we do the Players of the Week, we'll have Marlene on to present that. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Coach Hall of Fame, Coach Willie Jeffries. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you, and always put um, always put Hall of Fame coach in it. That that helps me out a little bit, and also uh, I'm coach emeritus. I'm coach emeritus at the school. Uh, I got the letter. I thought I was coach emeritus, but 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 it says coach emeritus. We're so happy to have Ms. Marlene Workman on today from ATI, and uh, she. Uh, uh, she's from the big town of Cope. Uh, that, uh, we were in the Christmas parade, Main Street, so short that you go around twice and, <laughs> and the fire truck follows in behind you. <laughs> uh, so happy to have LaVon Kirkland on today. I, I talked to LaVon the uh, day before yesterday. He's, he's with the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. A great guy, just a great guy. And without a, and, and a, okay, uh, Rob, you said, don't say without further ado, don't ever say that again, and I'm not going to say it. So now we're going to bring up the guy who has a headline, a byline, and a dateline, and they all have to be on time every time. Let's bring up Chris Clark, our sports editor for the Times and Democrat newspaper. Welcome, Chris. We may have to jump back to Chris here in a, in a second. Okay, I can, uh, I, I, I could go to Buddy. Uh, do you know if uh, you have LaVon Kirkland on yet? And I, I also, well, how about let me go to Ms. Work, to Marlene, and then come back to him while he's, while he's getting himself straightened out. Okay, you with me? Oh, hey. All right. It's good to be with everybody. I missed the touchdown hey. club. But anyway, um, okay. I'm talk to you. can you hear me? Talk to you about my comeback player. And uh, this kid, I've watched him yes. play football since he was about seven years old. And Coach Pugh, you might want to check him out. Anyway, he, um, yeah. he dislocated his shoulder during a wrestling match, but was able to come and win the state championship. But then after that, he went ahead and had surgery on his um, shoulder for a labral tear. He started therapy um, two days after his surgery. He had it on Jan uh, February 24th of 2020. He came into therapy uh, February 26th of 2020. He was dedicated. He was hardworking. I mean, we had the COVID. We had any and everything going on in here. And that kid didn't miss a time. And he came and he worked very, very hard. And we were able to get him back to football on July the 16th of 2020. In his two games that he's played thus far, he's a defensive end. He had 16 tackles, five tackles for loss, and three sacks. He also is having to play offensive guard because their guard is um, injured. And so he graded out at 88% there with five knockdown blocks. So our 2020 comeback player is senior defensive end of Bamber Earhart, Trayvon Jamison. He's a great kid. Check him out. And he's got great YouTube um, footage. Okay, thanks. Unmute oh. yourself, Coach. Okay, we're waiting. We're what? Okay, um, uh, let's. Um, uh, uh, I don't hear. I don't hear anything from Chris Clark, uh, buddy. Are you? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'll talk uh, about it. Would it be too early for you? No, I'm good. Yeah, let's go ahead and go ahead. Okay. Thank you, uh, Coach. Um, I want to talk a okay. little bit about Let's bring up our own coach. Let's, let's bring up our own coach, 
Coach Oliver Buddy Pugh. Take it away, Buddy. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you. Allow me to be on again today. Uh, usually I say congratulations to the players of the week, but now we hadn't done them yet, so I'm looking forward to uh, hearing Chris late on in the program and uh, hearing who the players of the week are. But uh, Trayvon, uh, congratulations on being the comeback guy. Sounds like you might be a, a guy guy out there, one of the real player players. So we look forward to checking on you. Um, the recruiting thing this year is a little bit crazy because the NCAA is not allowing uh, us to go out at all this year no. uh, recruiting. So we're doing most of our recruiting uh, either over the phone or uh, uh, we go on YouTube and get a chance to see all these guys on video. There's all kinds of tape out there now that we can see them. So, so we'll be checking on you guys and that kind of stuff. But, you know, our guys are working. Uh, we've, we've now started to practice uh, a little bit. Well, not really practice. What we're doing is lifting weights and running. And uh, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we do it almost all just weightlifting, that kind of stuff. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're doing a lot of running. Let me tell you something. At, at, at 6 o'clock in the morning, they, they run. And then at 6.30ish, somewhere in that neck of the woods, and we do some little walk-through kinds of stuff. And then, and then we turn them loose, let them go to the dining hall. But, you know, we're about three weeks into this thing now. So we're starting to, to round us some shape. And, and, and our strength and conditioning guys, have really been raving about how well our freshmen have played, uh, have uh, the kind of condition they're in, and and uh, you know, and how well they're adapting uh, to being you know in a college strength and conditioning program, that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited uh, about some of the, especially the offensive and defensive linemen, because those are generally the hard positions to play Amazing. You know, as freshmen. So who is that? Hey, coach. Hey. Palmer, um, how you doing? We we gonna God. let you on a minute. Just <laughs> y'all just kind of go ahead and mute your stuff, Coach Palmer, and we'll be right back. We'll be right with right. in a minute. But now, it looks like we've got uh, you know a real group of young guys come along, and I'm really excited about them. So you know, it's a uh, another week or so. We've got another week of uh, and, a, and a half of of workouts. We'll start our actual, I guess, fall practice. I guess you call it. It's not spring practice fall practice on the 19th of October. If you want to do something at six o'clock in the morning, you want to watch a little football <laughs> on Mondays and Wednesdays at six o'clock in the morning, we'll be working out. And then we'll work out on Friday afternoon and maybe Saturday or something of that nature. But uh, we'll be going in another week or so to actual practice. And then from there, we'll be practicing to work out for, you know, our season, which will start in February. So I'm looking forward to seeing our guys out here you know, actually practicing football. It's been almost a year, you know, since we've done, you know, anything of that sort. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, I guess I'm done. Um, I'm going to send it back to Did we get Chris back, y'all? I see Andy out there. I know one of our players of the week because I see Coach Palmer out there from over at OP. So, and it looks like he got a stud sitting sit at the by him. So, you know, it might be uh, – you know, it might be good for us to go back to y'all and then y'all then then go back to I need to find LeVon Kirkland though. He, he didn't come on yet, did he? Not yet. Okay, buddy. All right, coach. I'm buddy, done. I'm gonna call him then. Hey, I got him. Let me call him okay. right now. Okay. Uh yeah, go on and call him and I'm gonna do uh Chris Clark. Are you ready? He's not on. Chris, are you there? So, okay, hey, I'll tell you well, what, we, uh, let Andy, we, let, let Andy not, introduce his player of the week since he's on. He can tell us. I know it's either offensive or defensive, Andy. Unmute yourself, Andy. It's, there's Chris. He's, the, uh, he's the offensive player of the, of the week. Oh, okay. There's Chris. It's Chris on, y'all? got Chris. Good. Go, Chris. <laughs> can you see me and hear me? I've been been looking yeah. for you, Chris. I hear you. I, I hear right, you, my computer I decided to you. Start. All right, let's see. I should be able to get it back. I'll go ahead and do the uh, the start. Okay, so yes, it's starting to feel like a somewhat normal fall football season because uh, all of our TND region teams have now played at least one game. And uh, this past week, we actually had Orangeburg Wilkinson pick up its first win at Swansea, and the combined North Hunter Connor Tyler team got its first win of the season at Calhoun County. So, also as the trend has been this season, we have two TND Region Skiza teams that are still unbeaten, 
after six weeks of play. That's Andrew Jackson Academy and Holly Hill Academy. Hmm. Now for our players of the week. And you just saw one of them, I know. That's McCullough. So our offensive player of the week is junior quarterback McCullough Mims, who led Orangeburg Prep with six of seven passing for 117 yards and a touchdown, along with four carries for 64 yards and a touchdown in Friday's 34 to nothing shutout win at Greenwood Christian. Mims added a 20-yard interception return on defense. So our ATI Physical Therapy Offensive Player of the Week for head coach Andy Palmer and Orangeburg Prep is junior quarterback McCullough Mims. McCullough, you want to say anything, Coach Palmer? Got a lot of work to do still, and we got a good big region game coming up tomorrow and pick up a few more wins, and we'll see what we do at State. McCullough, McCullough, this is Rob Hibbets. Um, this is not the first good game you've had. Every game you've had, you really showed up and done great. But uh, you better watch out because your brother may beat you out next year. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> we bring him home, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that, though. All, All right. right. Yeah. Who do you all play next week? We, we play um, – Hilton Head Prep on the road uh, tomorrow night, and then we have Buford Academy at home for um, homecoming in a week, week and a day. Y'all are at five and one now? Five and one. So two big region games coming up. McCullough, this is Coach Jeffries. You have another year left in, in high school? Yes, sir, I do. I'm a junior right now. Okay. Did you pass, uh, you passed uh, algebra and chemistry? <laughs> yes, sir. I passed all my classes. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you one and see if you can figure this out. Don't work. <laughs> don't ask Coach Palmer because he doesn't know. Uh, <laughs> little Johnny was a chemist. <laughs> little Johnny was a chemist, but he ain't no more. What he thought was H2O was H2SO4. Tell me what's H2SO4. <laughs> That's sulfuric acid. That's sulfuric acid. acid. You you know you know H two O, don't you? H two O is water, right? So what he thought was water was sulfuric acid. That's why he's not a chemist anymore. Okay, <laughs> Coach Palmer, you got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, Coach, now uh, you wanted to check uh, yesterday. Buddy, we, got uh, now. We, we got our defensive player of the week still. <laughs> Okay, uh, coming up, uh, right congratulations, uh, McCullough. Uh, huh? Congratulations, and you do – you're you're outstanding, buddy. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm course, on the thing. Don't, don't take no... him back to class. Don't take him back till the physics over. Don't take him back till he get through with physics. I see you guys in the I mean, class. My thing is up, so. <laughs> Who is that, peep, who's that peeping on the screen, Coach? Take in there, Walt. Okay, now we we have LeVon Kirkland. He's yeah, talking I'm, I'm to Buddy. On. I'm talking I'm talking to now, you now. They see uh, me. Chris. <laughs> yes, Coach. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, but, but we I'm have – uh, hold up. Uh, we have Chris Clark. Chris has to do our defensive player of the week. So, LeVon, you hold on, you and Buddy. Yeah, and as we go to our defensive player of the week, Coach Palmer, don't you all play at 5 o'clock tomorrow? We are actually playing at 4.15 because of the light situation, yep. Okay, so 4.15, just want to make sure all the fans knew. So, Sir? That's great. I just yeah. want to make sure all the fans knew what time. Yeah. So 4.15. That's good. All right. Now for our defensive player of the week. Senior cornerback Jamarion Tyler led the combined North Hunter Connor Tyler team with an interception, two pass breakups, and a 75-yard fumble recovery return for a touchdown in Friday's 28-10 Region 3A win at Calhoun County. Tyler also had three receptions on offense for the Trojans. Our ATI Physical Therapy Defensive Player of the Week for head coach Tony Felder and the North Hunter Connor Tyler team is senior cornerback Jamarion Tyler. And they were going to try to join. I'm not sure if they were able to join today. Well, I'm actually here on audio. I couldn't get my video up. We so far out in the country, we didn't get no reception out here. But um, I'm right, here Coach. on audio. That's Coach Tony <laughs> Felder, everybody. Coach Tony Felder, my I'd bump, that boy's anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yes, yeah, sir. Because um, he missed curfew. 
I'm glad but you can join us. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for the uh, the invite, and thank you very much for the recognition of our players. Great, and good luck this week too. Thank All you right. very much. Finish up our they good. Oh yes, that's a, a tough region oh, okay. for sure. Uh, so tomorrow uh, night, Tony Felder, tomorrow night, uh, go go right ahead, Chris. Go right ahead. I was gonna I was gonna finish up, Coach. Tomorrow night, our TND region games include Strom Thurmond and Orangeburg Wilkinson, Bethune Bowman at Bamberg Earhart, and like we mentioned, Orangeburg oh, Prep at Hilton Head Prep. Also, the unbeaten's Andrew Jackson Academy and Holly Hill Academy are two unbeaten's in Skiza. They each have road games, so this could be some tests for them. And it's worth noting that Bamberg Earhart is ranked number seven in the Class A uh, part of the poll in the South Carolina Prep Media Football Poll this week. Branchville is also receiving some votes in Class A. And, of course, to transition on, uh, LeVon Kirkland's Lamar Silver Foxes are in their familiar spot in the number one spot in the Class A poll. Back to you, Coach Jeffers. Okay. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. And Chris, we appreciate you and the job you do in picking the players of the week and, and, and being on and writing your articles. Thank you very much, Chris. Sure, Coach. Uh, next, we're going to have Coach Buddy Pugh. Um, uh, Buddy, uh, also you heard from Coach Tony Felder. And Tony and, and Buddy played football together. Both of them, uh, both of them played three sports, uh, football, baseball, and hooky. <laughs> but but both, they're both good guys. And, and, and Tony, congratulations to you in, in developing that program out there. So now we have um, coming up to talk a little bit of – he's already talked some about the Bulldogs, and he's going to introduce our illustrious speaker today. And I'm so happy that we have LaVon Kirkland, good friend, uh, good man with David Wyatt and the uh, South Carolina football uh, Hall of Fame. So now let's call on our own coach, Coach Oliver Buddy Pugh. Uh, thank you, uh, Coach. I uh, uh, appreciate you allowing me to come on and uh, and and do the introduction of your friend uh, and our uh, star, big linebacker. Uh, he was known as one of the uh, biggest linebackers to play in the NFL, uh, LeVon Kirkland. He's from Lamar uh, and Clemson. Of course, we've got all kind of Lamar guys around here. I've got a boy named Jablonski Blunt and DeCovid Duran and two or three other guys around here, too, from Lamar. And we've had the Hamlin boys and Marshall McFadden and all kind of guys here. So we've, been, we've had a steady trail of those guys coming from over that way. And, of course, they continue to have good players over there. Uh, Chris said that they were the number one team in the state. He was a 90 two second round draft choice for Pittsburgh Steelers, played 10 years in the league, played 10 years with the Steelers and the Seahawks and the Eagles. And, uh, I, you know, when you start talking about it, I'd say, coach, I remember that guy, he was coaching. He coached at FAMU uh, for a while. He was the defense coordinator at FAMU for a couple of years back in the uh, early 90s, I think it might have been, uh, maybe in the, the early 2000s, excuse me. And uh, of course, he recently was an assistant with the with the Arizona Cardinals. But uh, he was a two-time Pro Bowler. He was two-time All Pro. He was a great player, you know, in the league, and 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 has had some success in playing and coaching. He now works with the South Carolina Hall of Fame, and you know, they 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 got this uh, show um, Inside Blitz with Levon Kirkland, and he talks with uh, most of the legends in the state. Uh, guys like George Rogers and 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 Danny Ford and Coach Willie Jeffries and he even talked to Joe Mogul. Y'all saw Joe Mogul on uh, CNBC yesterday when Charles Schwab and all those guys kind of com combined together. I don't know who took over who, uh, Rob. That might be more in your neck of the woods, but somebody took over somebody, and uh, hopefully. Uh, our, our retirement went up yesterday. I don't think so. But anyway, um, you know, he's had all those guys on his on his uh, uh, radio broadcast. I think it might be a podcast on YouTube or something like that. But uh, he's got all kind of stuff. If you go LeVon Kirkland out there, if you if you Google that, you'll see all that stuff will come up. So without any further ado, 
I'm going to bring to you uh, Mr. Player, Coach, everything, LeVon Kirkland. Go for it. Thank you, Coach, for that warm introduction. The check is in the mail. I just need to, I just need to get your address. All right. I appreciate it. I need it. <laughs> yes. I, I also want to thank the touchdown, the Orangeburg Touchdown Club for inviting me. This is truly an honor for me. Uh, South Carolina students are ranked 43rd in the country for being college and career readiness, according to the usnews.com. I, I don't know about any of you, but I never want to be ranked 43rd in anything. So just want you to let that sink in for a second. 43rd in the nation as far as college and career readiness. Educate, empower, encourage. The South Carolina Football Hall of Fame has developed a program called the Bridge Builders Excellent Program, which is designed to educate, empower, and encourage our students and student athletes. For the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, it's more than football. It's making a difference through the game of football. What would happen if we all became bridge builders? If we all com committed to educating, empowering, and encouraging our students? Instead of us being in the bottom 10% of the nation, what if we led them to be in the top 10% of the nation as far as college and career readiness. Now, I was extremely lucky in my journey. I had a great family, I had great coaches, and I was able to achieve on a very high level. But we all know the opposite. We know students or student athletes that had great talent, great players, but they didn't have any support. They didn't have any resources. We really cry because we saw the potential unfilled. Someone who should have been great, but wasn't able to do it. We can see in their expressions, the what if, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if I was a better student? And a lot of times we can understand the doom, the doom in their future, not having a future. And basically the stakes are this, when we're not doing that, we don't commit to these students. These students get left behind. Not only that, our communities suffer. Our economy suffers. Your business suffers. And our state is not striving the way it should. It's just mainly trying to survive. But at the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, we have dedicated and committed ourselves to having a plan, to fulfilling a promise. We have done the research along with uh, Greenville Commerce. We have understand the problem for the last two years. And we have designed a program called the Bridge Builders Excellence Program. And our plan is to have this program across the state where kids can go in and learn the life skills that they have to learn and able to go to the next level. We have developed a awareness with our podcast the Inside Blitz with LeVon Kirkland, that we talk to 
former great coaches, great players from this state of South Carolina to spread the word about being successful, about leadership. We have talked to some amazing students and we've gotten their perspective on being a college student. What guys need to do to be great in high school. We have told the stories of success in South Carolina. We have done that. And we're in our second season and we're growing. And we're talking to touchdown clubs like Orangeburg Touchdown Club. Matter of fact, I have a, a conversation I'm gonna have with the Anderson Football Club. And we're out there reaching out to business owners, helping them to understand our vision and our plan. Helping them to understand that we want to do something incredibly great. We want to do something that hasn't been done on this level in a long time. So our call to action is basically this. We want you to commit to investing to, be, to our students in this Bridge Builder program. We want our investors to educate, to empower, and to encourage South Carolina students to be successful in their college, career, and life endeavors. Commit, commit to helping our students become top 10 in college and career readiness by December 31st, 2030. Now, how can you become a bridge builder and help our students become top 10 by 2030? We're looking for company advertisers. You can basically call me, LaVon Kirkland. You can go to my email, Kirkland at South Carolina Football, and football spelled out, H-O-F dot org. Uh, require our uh, go to our other go to our website South Carolina Football spelled out H O F dot org slash join the movement. We can, we put together a custom package just for you. You can approve it and execute a custom advertisement agreement. Another way you can do this. And our call to action is become an investor member. Go to our website, SC football spelled out, HOF.org slash join the movement. Now I know it's a long website. I know it's a long address, but that's the address we got. Choose your preferred membership level. Check out another way to become a, a bridge builder is to be, become a donor. Go to our website, hit the Invest Now button in the upper right-hand corner, check out. Or you can send a personal check made out to the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame uh, at 935 South Main Street, Suite 203, Greenville, South Carolina, 29601. Please identify what the purpose of the check is. And you can also be a volunteer. And this is where you're going to contact Mike Foster. Mike Foster is at foster at South Carolina Football Hall of Fame dot org. Set up a message or a meeting. Identify where you'd like to help. So that's our call to action. And I want you guys to envision what this can be like in the future. If we commit to being bridge builders. You can see that student that you saw laid behind on the wayside become that person that they were born to become. You can see our communities getting better. Instead of just merely surviving, they're striving. You can see our economy getting better, our workforce getting better, more jobs. And you can see overall our state becoming better. You can see our students, instead of being ranked 
43rd, they're ranked in the top 10 in 2030. That's the, that's the future that we see at the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. That's the vision that myself as a vice president of development and being a student athlete, a student in South Carolina, playing collegiate ball in South Carolina, going off to the NFL, that's my passion. And I think it's my duty to give back to these students and these student athletes. And I think that you have skin in the game, that you have a promise to give back to these students and student athletes. Again, I wanna thank you so much for allowing me to be here. It's always a privilege and an honor to talk about my passion our passion at the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, which is to educate, to empower, and to encourage. And for the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, it's more than football. It's making a difference through football. Thank you so much for allowing me your time and your energy. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, you want to ask me now, you can. I'd be more than willing to answer those questions. But again, thank you so much for allowing me this time. Okay, LaVon, uh, uh, we're going to take questions if we can. Uh, I think we're able to do that. Uh, Rob, can we uh, open it up for questions? Absolutely. Uh uh, Coach Kirkland, um, yes, you played uh, before uh, Coach Sweeney came along. Uh, when they yes. hired Coach Sweeney, what was your impression, and what did you think uh, would happen at Clemson? Well, I think he's done an amazing job. I think that Clemson has had a great tradition throughout the years, especially when I was there, Danny Ford, Ken Hatfield, and winning three ACC championships. But as you can well see, Coach, Coach Sweeney has really put a, another spin on it. He's taken Clemson to another level. Um, he was a coach that wasn't really highly regarded for that, that position, but he has really dug in and committed to a better Clemson University. And you can see that not only in the fo on the football field, but you can also see that in the graduation rate as far as our players are concerned. And that's really, that's really speaks a lot of what that program has done. And they have committed to the student athlete. And you can see the progress that they're making, they're continuing to making over the last 10 years have been a consistent winner on and off the field. So it's amazing what they're doing at Clemson and it's amazing what they're building. And, you know, I always wish them Absolutely success, you know. That was a great answer. Great Thank answer. Thank you. We have any other questions? I've got one. Oh, go ahead. Okay. LaVon, in the late 90s, I was fortunate enough to be at the morning news and covered a lot of Lamar football games and covered your golf tournaments and your fundraisers to really help the community. Just wanted to ask you, I mean, I remember one time when they had – a brand new fence up at Lamar Field, and it came down that Friday night when Lamar beat Timmonsville in like a last-second play. Anything, right. just anything that you remember, just from representing community, and like you said, having great coaches and great family. Just anything that you remember, just learning, or any any fun story, just about your time in high school that prepared you for Clemson and the NFL. Well, I was fortunate enough to have a coach like Terry Thiers, who are, who was our head coach at the time. Coach like Donald Poole, uh, Coach Bethay, a lot of coaches that really, Coach Bloom, Coach Perry, a lot of coaches that really poured into your life. We're, we're from a small town, and you're from a small town. You get to kind of know everybody, whether you want to or whether you don't want to. But the good thing about being from Lamar, and I always tell people that I had an opportunity to also play basketball and run track. 
And it was just a really tight knit community, you know, where family means family and you, you're not only family to your immediate family, but you're family to the community. And I just remember uh, what Coach Thires really sacrificed for me to get recruited. You know, he took me to those games, my visits. Um, he helped pay for a camp that I went to at the University of South Carolina. So I, I just really remember Lamar in a, a lot of fa- uh, fondness. And, I, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was make sure that Lamar got on the map. We've always had really great athletes, and we had athletes to go to smaller colleges, but I was one that was fortunate enough to go to a Clemson University. And I, when I went to the NFL, you know, I, I wanted Lamar to be known for what it had, and I wanted some – for it to get some exposure. So I will always come back home during the all season just to be around. I, I wanted kids to see success live and in the flesh. And I really believe that that really inspired people like John Abraham, Mike Hamlin, uh, BJ Goodson, Marshall Matt Fadden, you know, a 1A school to have five guys being in the NFL. I think it's probably amazing, probably one of the amazing stories ever. And we, we got more coming. We got more coming. And, you know, being in Lamar was a good experience for me. And hopefully we continue to uplift the, uplift the community. And I really want the, the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame and our bridge program to be a part of that. That's great. Coach Carlin, we have oh, a – Okay, LaVon, I have a question. Okay. Uh, yes, this is Coach Jeffries. I have a question. Yes, sir. LaVon, um, what is it about Clemson? Uh, they get the top recruits. Is it Dabo Sweeney? Is it, is it that beautiful campus? Is it the winning tradition? Tell us a little bit about that when a player goes to visit or whatever he goes through during his um, OPV, that's an f- official paid visit. Tell us about that and how they attract uh, the top athletes in America. Well, I, I think you, you really pointed on some of those factors. You know, Dabo Sweeney being the leader of the team, I think with him, you s- You know, you get a guy who can really generally convince almost anybody to be a part of the Clemson tradition. I think also the tradition is a part of it, winning national championships of late. And then also the campus is a beautiful campus. It's a great school to go to, great environment. Uh, It basically has all you want as far as a student athlete is concerned. And And I have to say this also too, they have a program called the Paul Journey, which is a program that we're kind of modeling ourselves after. And it really not only sucks the players as football players, but they dig a little deeper. And they try to get those guys prepared and ready for the next level. And when I say the next level, it's not always about the NFL, but going into the workforce, being prepared, having those job interviews, ready for them. So these guys come out and they're prepared. And once you do that kind of recruiting, it kind of does it itself in a lot of ways because now students are requiring like what's going on Clemson? Why is it so good? And now your best recruiters are your former student athletes, your football players that are part of it. And so I think that's really one of the reasons why is so good because it's not just developing football players. It's not just a football factory, but I believe wholeheartedly is a place where a guy, a young man could really grow up and be ready for the world. And as you know, as a football player, sometimes it's really, it's really hard to really connect with the rest of the campus, but I think they do a good job of giving you what you need to go on to adult life. So I, I think that's, those are some of the factors why Clemson is doing so well. Coach, uh, uh, we've been awarding players of the week uh, for 20 years now almost. That's almost 500 recipients. Um, 
So you brought up a very interesting point. Uh, probably about 30 to 40 percent of our players of the week get, get some scholarship help in, in college. But we've only put two or three in the pros from mm -hmm. this area. And it's not one high school like you're referring to. It's the whole community, which is eight or 10, 10 high schools combined. So your record is very impressive and very, very good. Well, thank you very much. You know, it takes so much to go into the NFL. I, I think you got to be not only extremely talented, but I think you got to be very fortunate to go. Things got to work out for you as far as you're not getting hurt, um, as far as you're getting drafted to the right team, being involved with the right coach, being involved with the right culture. And I, I feel that that's a part of it. And going into the NFL, you know, really it's a 1% chance that most student athletes are going to make it to that level and go beyond three years. Uh, so what I think that we've done at Lamar has been incredible. I, I think that we've been extremely fortunate too for our guys who have gone through that process. But I, I think the most important thing um, is that football is a shelf life and you want your players to be ready for the real life, to go into the workforce and be prepared. I think that's the biggest thing. And I'm saying it from a guy who was very successful in the NFL, who had a 11-year career. You know, at the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, we're trying to emphasize um, that 99% that don't really go to the NFL. We want to help those students. And we want to be a support system and a network that they can count on for the rest of their lives. So you are correct. And thank you for that great compliment. But I, I think the whole thing is really getting students ready for the world. That That's our driving factor there. Coach Kirtland, we have a question from the audience. Um, okay. Are there volunteers for the bridge builders all across the state, or do they need to be specifically in the Greenville area? No, no. This, this program really is, is statewide. We have actually had a finalist for our Bridge Builder Excellent program, and these kids were from everywhere. And I understand we're located in Greenville, but we want to have our reach all in the state of South Carolina. At some point, we want to make sure that we're in all 300 schools. So if you want to be a volunteer, again, you can contact Mike Foster at Foster at South Carolina Football, spelled out HOF dot org. And you can contact him and he can give you information on how to be a volunteer. We're not just going to be in the upstate or just Greenville. And this is just not a Clemson thing. We want to make sure we touch the whole state. So, yeah, we need volunteers from everywhere, anybody we can get to be a volunteer for us. Levon, uh, this is Coach Jeffries again. Uh, one of our one of our top sponsors is a Clemson graduate, uh, Ms. Marlene Workman, and uh, she went there to Clemson. She made a C triple minus in study hall. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of like me. I, That's I, what I did. I would I would hope <laughs> yeah, I would hope that maybe she would have a comment about her time at Clemson and there's something unique about it, uh, Lavon. That's that's what I was trying to pull out, and you answered it very well. But uh, she's one of our top sponsors, and I wonder if she has any comment about uh, your presentation uh, uh, about the Bridge Builders program. I think she left the call. I think she left the call, Coach. No, she's on. She's on. Okay, great. All right. Okay, uh, LaVon, uh, if, any, if, if there are no closing comments, we certainly thank you. Um, uh, you know, I've helped um, you and, and David Wyatt doing the Blitz. It's a great uh, program, the Inside Blitz with LaVon uh, Kirkman, and we certainly appreciate you. If, if um, no further comments, I bring up the president of the Orangeburg Touchdown Club, Rob Hibbets. Coach, can I just say one more thing? I just want to leave, 
you know, make yes. sure I touch on our call to action, ways you can be involved in becoming a bridge builder. You can become a company uh, advertiser. You can just get in touch with me at Kirkland at South Carolina football spelled out H-O-F dot org. You become a investing member. Um, you can reach us at our website at South Carolina football uh, H-O-F dot org. You become a, um, an investing member, go to the same website, and then also you can donate and be a volunteer. So I want to make sure that I get those four points out there to you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Okay. Uh, thank you, LaVon. Uh, uh, Mr. Rob Hibbis, will you take over? And <clears throat> I see Buddy wants to say something or whatever. And uh, we'll bring up uh, Rob Hibbets, our Touchdown Club president. Thank you very much, Coach Jeffries. Um, Coach Kirtland, um, it's obvious you've been a success at every level. Uh, your comments today were right on. Um, your bridge program will hopefully be a huge success. And uh, I think you can look to the Orange Brick Touchdown Club to help you out a little bit. And again, appreciate your success and, and know you'll continue that. Appreciate you being on board. Thank you. Um, I'd like to congratulate again our players of the week, Jamarion and McCullough. Uh, best of luck to you all for the rest of the season. Um, again, we're so sorry we can't get you and your parents in our meeting, which, which was a lot of fun every week. And also to Travon, the comeback player, that's a great record you've already done and wish you great success the rest of the year also. Our speaker next week is Doug Williams, the former uh, quarterback for the Washington Redskins, um, head coach of uh, Grambling. And uh, so that should be a very interesting program, and I hope you all will join us. Uh, last week's Pick'em contest was won by Charles Way, who only missed one game. So I think, um, Charles, you're going to put the uh, Pick'em contest up on the board right now, I think, aren't you? Okay, there you go. So write those down. Okay. So what we have this week is Kentucky versus Mississippi State, uh, Virginia versus NC State, Navy versus Temple, North Carolina versus Virginia Tech, TCU versus Kansas State, South Carolina versus Vanderbilt. And then our big kicker is the total points in the Clemson and Miami game. So this is our chestnut grill pick'em contest. When you fill this out, please email that to ahunter at culpepperwood.com. We look forward to seeing a big crowd. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, I wish all the high schools great success. The colleges are gonna have some great games this weekend. Y'all have a safe weekend, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again the same time next Thursday. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Coach. Bye. Coach. Coach. Bye, everyone. Coach. Yes. We need to get involved with that program, okay? We do. Right, my sister needs to be the darn volunteer. She'd be a great volunteer for that. Y'all talk Roxanne up for that. That was her question, I bet. It was, Marlene. <laughs> Mar I knew it. Marlene, I'm sorry, right now. Why didn't you, why didn't you okay. say, Marlene, 